Well, it's been a long time since September 2020 when my engine first failed on me. But I'd just like to go through and thank everybody who made all the comments. It has been a great help. And just go through and explain what actually had happened on that day. The first question that uh, happened is what was different to the last flight? And the last flight I had put the fuel tanks fully fuel, full of fuel and then unfortunately due to the weather we didn't fly for a few days and in that time the fuel had siphoned up and over the vent tubes. So let me just show you the vent tubes on the tanks. You've got, let me see, the vent tube from the top of the slipper tank and then you've got this vent tube from the main tank. They go up to T pieces in here and then they come all the way down below the level of the tanks so that should you be upside down then you won't have fuel spilling out. Now that was, was what we thought there'd been a vapor lock in that and there and that of caused the engine to stop on the first occasion. We came back, we did ground runs, we checked the carburetors once we landed, they were full of fuel and we did ground runs and then I went and tested the did a flight for half an hour it worked fine the next flight is the one that is the video which I'll put a link into up here somewhere where it stopped and so many comments is why did I say Andy the engine stopped Andy was the last person who had done a radio call and was the only person on frequency so that's what I was telling him why didn't Andy reply he was out running to get to the crash site first of all. Now some people to say to give help, other people to say get spare parts first. But I think it was One suggestion help. a number of people made was that when you're putting a hose onto a barbed connector like this, this is a fuel hose, as you put it on, you can like nick up a little piece of rubber and that acts like a one-way valve. Now I took all the hoses off, cut them open, and examined inside to see if that had happened and I couldn't find any trace of it. So it was a, a good point to check out but it wasn't a problem. Now one of the suggestions was that if it had been a fuel related engine failure there would have been coughing and spluttering before the engine stopped. So one of the things to test that and which we can do on the shadow is that we pull the emergency fuel cutoff. We had the engine running at full power, we pulled the emergency cutoff and let it run. Simon from Eccleston Aviation saw the video and contacted me and explained that could be the coils breaking down when they got hot. He explained how to test for this and sure enough they were faulty. Okay so Simon explained to us what the fuel, uh, the coil pack, how it failed, the temperature. You probably recognize these little plugs that come up the side of your 582 out of the casing here. That's a coil pack. CFS Aeros were fantastic. They are contacted Rotax in Austria. It was just out of warranty, but with COVID and that, the plane hadn't been flying. There's only kind of 24 hours on the engine and they replaced the coil with a new one. Of course, that does fit in there. It does need specialist tools, but fortunately the airfield, we've got lots of specialist engineers who have got the specialist tools. So fortunately we could replace the foot coil pack and this is the result. So now I thought I had the smoking gun. We'd found a fault, it had been repaired, replaced, we'd done all the ground runs we possibly could on the side of the hill, up a hill at full power for quite a three minutes or more. So now I'd run out of excuses and I had to fly. Thank you. 
So the flight didn't go exactly as I'd hoped, but this video did help to solve the problem. And it was finding out what the real issue was. Once we landed again, notice that there was fuel in the carbs. In fact, I started the engine up and taxied back to the hangar. The fuel pressure was the giveaway. It suddenly climbed to over 10 PSI just prior to the engine failing. Normally the PSI is about 5.5. And then on the glide down, it slowly descend, uh, decreased. A number of people asked why I didn't land straight ahead. There's a number of power lines straight ahead. That's why it's preferable to turn to the right and land in those empty fields or back at the airfield. So here we are, We've got the carburetor bowl off and here's the main jet. And what we found is that the main jet the housing holding the main jet was totally loose, 100% loose, just touching the bottom of the bowl. That was causing the fuel pressure to build up, stopping the engines. There you go, that's the whole story. At least it's got a happy ending. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. And I think the funniest comment was by somebody called Johnny.